In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel and accounts receivable AGN report from QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our free QuickBooks Online test drive file, Craig's Design and Landscaping Services. We're going to scroll on down to the reports down below. We don't, we don't really need to scroll, but it's going to be down right here where the reports are. And then we're going to be looking at the accounts receivable aging report. Now that's going to be supporting like pretty much all reports other than the financial statement reports. One of the financial statement report accounts, that being an account on the balance sheet for accounts receivable. Let's first start off when then with opening our favorite report, the accounts receivable report for which the accounts receivable aging report will be uh, supporting or summarizing or giving more detail on. Once that's open, let's go ahead and duplicate that up top. I'm going to right-click the tab up top. We're going to duplicate the tab up top. Then we're going to change the dates. So I'm going to change the dates from 010119 to 123119. Then we're going to run that report. And that's what we're going to start in with here. Now I'm going to I'm going to close the hamburger for now so we can just think about this for a second. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. We're going to, I'm holding down cons uh, control, by the way, and scrolling up. And I think I'm at, uh, let's keep it at the 125%. We're concentrating here on the accounts receivable account. And you can imagine what happens with the accounts receivable account. Just a little scenario, what would happen if we're the bookkeeper in a company. Uh, we can imagine the, the owner or the boss of the company asking, how much money do people owe us, you know, for services that we've done that we haven't gotten paid yet for. And we'd look on the balance sheet, we'd say 5,281 uh, 52 is how much people owe us what's the next question the boss is going to ask at some point or the owners is going to ask is going to say well who owes us that money and and how much you know when when are we going to collect on it have you you know we need to follow up with these people and so to do that we cannot just drill down to the data like we would normally if i just go and click on that and say hmm, i can get more data on that accounts receivable by just clicking on it i'm going to scroll back down and then we get our transaction detail report which is nice but doesn't give us what we want because it's given us the transaction detail, which are the invoices and the payments by date. I don't want it by date. I want to know by person, by customer, who owes us the money. So that therefore the traditional transaction detail, which is a good report oftentimes to give us more detail, isn't sufficient for the accounts receivable report. So I'm going to go back to the report uh, summary and I'm going to make this a little bit larger again. So, so then we need something more. That's why the accounts receivable is kind of a special account. That's why it has its own account type. That's why it's not simply grouped in other. In other words, if I go back to our first page down here and we go down to the accounting and we go to the chart of accounts and you'll recall the chart of accounts, whenever we make account a new account, we have to group it by the account type. And the accounts receivable, we're not just putting into other assets. We have to have an account type that's going to be specific to accounts receivable. It's going to be called accounts receivable. I'm trying to make this a little bit wider, but it won't let me. So we have to have the account type of accounts receivable, not just other current assets, even though it is an other, you know, a current asset type of account. Because QuickBooks is going to track the accounts receivable separately. It's actually going to force us pretty much every time to any time we use accounts receivable account to assign a customer because it wants to be able to say, hey, look, if you're going to put something I'm going to, to this account, then I need to, as the system, tie it out to a customer so I can make supplemental reports to it that will match this report. I need to give you, a, I need to give you reports by customer. That's why this is going to basically be a really important account. It's going to be separate type of account on larger type of organizations. Uh, you can have a full-time job, multiple jobs, a whole department, basically tracking uh, the accounts receivable type of account and trying to collect on uh, the receivable. So let's take a look at the major report. Then if we were working in the AR department, and that's going to be the A accounts receivable aging report. Back to the prior tab, go into the reports down below. And we're looking through the favorite reports. It's not typically up there unless you work in the accounts receivable, in which case it will be. And then we're in the business reports, balance sheet, profit and loss, and the statement of cash flow. Who owes you money? That sounds like receivable. Who owes us money? It's going to be around here somewhere. And here we have the accounts receivable aging detail and the accounts receivable aging summary. Now, before we go into those, I just want to give a quick look at the customer balance detail so, or the customer balance summary, these two reports as well. So these are the two reports we would be working with a lot, or these four reports, these variants of the two reports, a lot. Let's first take a look at the customer balance uh, detail, and then we'll get to the accounts receivable aging report. 
I'm going to then open a new tab with this. I'm going to right click on the tab up top. We're going to duplicate this report. And here we have it. So now we have the detail by customer. So as you'll recall, if, we, if we're asking our question here, we're saying, okay, back to our balance sheet report, who owes us that money? And then we can take a look at the customer balance detail or summary report. And if we get to the bottom line of this report, it should be a summary report of the number on the balance sheet. So we have the 5,281.52 back to the balance sheet. That's the 5,281.52. So we're taking that number, breaking it out by who owes us the money. And then we can go back into our uh, report here and we can basically follow up on who owes us the money. Now, when we're on the detailed report, so this is broken out obviously by the customer. So within each customer, it's given us the detail of that customer information. So the question then is who owes us money? Once we know who owes us money, we can then take a look at the details. So when we call them, we're going to say, hey, you know, uh, you, you owe us money, uh, Jeff's Jeff, <laughs> you know, and they're going to add, well, why? And then if we want to know why, we, we can go into this invoice and that'll give us the detail that we can follow up and say, hey, this is, you know, this is why we're following up on this invoice. So that's the next question that would be asked. So if you can imagine how the scenario goes, we're going to say, boss, ask, who owes us, how much money do people owe us? They owe us 5,281. Well, who's, who owes us that money? Well, these people owe us that money here, and we can tell them who, who owes us the most money because we can kind of look through this and say who owes us the most. And then the next question is, well, when are we going to collect on that? I mean, how come we're not, you know, when are, I, I want, I'd like the cash, please. So then we got to say, well, how old are these um, amounts? Are any of these past due? Should we be collecting these soon? Or what's the deal with that? Well, for that, we're going to go to the aging report. So now we're getting to the aging report. I'm going to go back to the reports on the left. We're going to go back to the reports on the left. We're going to scroll on back down. Favorites, business overview. Then we have who owes you money. And then that's what we want. Who owes us money, right? Then we got who owes you money. We're looking for the accounts receivable aging report. Let's look at the detail report again. We're going to go to the accounts receivable aging detail report. We're going to change the dates up top. And we only have the one date now. We're going to say the date is going to be 12 31 uh one nine we're going to customize uh, or create that and then run the report then i'm going to duplicate the report again i'm going to right click up top and duplicate it so it's going to open in the second tab and here we have it now the bottom line of this report if i go down to the bottom line we still have that 5281.52 that should tie out to what's on the balance sheet going back to the balance sheet 5281.52 this report then gives us the information of how old these items are. So it's sorted by basically how old the invoice are, how past due is the invoice. Very common type of report, very useful type of report. We can say, okay, of the, of the people that owe us money, how likely are we to get that money? Of the people that owe us 5,281, how likely are we to get it? Well, the more past due it is, the more likely we're not going to get it. We're talking to somebody who just isn't, you know, it's not good for the money or whatever. So, right, so the ones that are going to be uh, within 61 to 90 days past due are going to be our, our most critical concern. That's going to be this invoice. So from a past due standpoint, this is the one we want to start with. We want to basically ask about this and call about this. Say, hey, this one, you got an invoice out there. It's past due. We're just following up on it. Then we have the 61 to 90 past due, second most critical category, uh, the 31 to, to 90, the 31 to 60 days past due. And then the total one to 30 days past due uh, down below. And so obviously the older something is, the more likely it's going to be not to be collectible. And if we're trying to estimate how much of the receivables are actually good, the, the sales that are good, if we're doing something like an allowance method calculation, this would often be a, a report that can be useful for that type of calculation. Once again, we can get the detail here by selecting any of those invoices and going into that detail about those invoices to follow up on them. Let's go, let's go one more time and take a look at the summary report. And then we're going to generate our, we'll generate our report in Excel from that. So I'm going to go back to the, to the first tab. We're going to go down to the reports again, and let's find the summary report for the accounts receivable aging. So we'll scroll on back down and we're going to say, who owes you? We want then the accounts receivable summary aging summary let's pick that one see what it looks like we'll change the dates up top we could probably imagine what it looks like it's going to be similar to the 123119 and we're going to run that report 
And this is a nice little summary. You got the, the 1 to 30, the 31 to 60, the 61 to 90. If you're working like an accounts, if you're trying to estimate the amount of your receivables that are uncollectible, doing some kind of allowance method estimate of, you know, this is going to be the type of report that you often uh, will see. And, and then you can basically say, okay, you know, based on how old something is, how likely is it that I'm going to be not able to collect something? Here's the 5,281.52 that ties out to the balance sheet here. Once again, we have the 5,281.52 on the balance sheet. Going back to our report. Also note that this report doesn't have a date range. It only has one date on it. That's typically the case or often the case when we're supporting a balance sheet report because what we're doing is supporting uh, a report on the balance sheet which only has one date. Where do we stand at this point in time? Note that was a little bit different than when we went over to uh, the report for the, for the detail, customer balance detail. Why? Because we needed to show the invoices here and the invoices are performance. So even though we're looking at a point in time of accounts receivable, we're looking at the detail of what has happened over some time frame and that's going to give us the invoices. When we go to this report, we're taking a look about at the aging, how old something is, how past due something is as of a specific point in time. Therefore, we don't have a beginning and ending date. We're saying, hey, as of December 31st, 2019, this is what accounts receivable is, and this is how past due uh, these invoices are or groups of invoices or amounts that are supported by invoices are. Okay, let's go ahead. And, and remember, everything in here is an invoice. We don't have sales receipts because this is account, the, the sales receipt would be something that we sold that, that at the same point in time that didn't generate a receivable. So everything related to the AR that's increasing the AR is going to be an invoice. And then every time it goes down, it's going to be the payment. We're going to receive a payment of some kind. So those are going to be the, the types of transactions we would expect to see uh, in anything with accounts receivable. So if we go to our, our detail here, you'll note we basically are, everything's being driven by the invoices. We don't, we're not looking at uh, sales receipts. So I'm going to go back to this one. Let's go ahead and print and format it. So I'm going to go ahead and do our customization or our standard formatting. We're going to go back up top and we want to customize this report. I'm going to remove the pennies. We're going to make the negative numbers bracketed and red. Then I'm going to scroll down to the header and footer and I'm going to remove the date prepared, time prepared. Notice there's no report basis on this one. Why? Because the accounts receivable itself is an accrual account. So if you're using accounts receivable and having a report on it, it must then be an accrual basis. So there we have this. We're going to go ahead and print this. So we could send this to somebody. We could email it, but we got multiple reports. We could save it as a PDF file and then attach multiple P PDF files or zip the file. Or we can save them as a PDF file with the printer and the cute PDF, which we will practice. Or export it to Excel and make one PDF file with multiple reports in it, which we'll do as well. So let's go ahead and print it. We're going to practice using the PDF printer. We're going to print it there. It's going to ask us, hey, where do you, would you like to put it? Actually, not yet. It's going to print it to the PDF printer. And then we're going to print it again. Or we're going to hit another print button so it'll print. And then it's going to ask us, where would you like to put it? And so then we're going to put it in uh, this report. And I actually saved it and, and redid this. So this one's going to be the accounts receivable aging summary. Now, note when you do accounts receivable aging summary, you're going to be tempted possibly if you cite AR to put a dash here. You can't put the dashes because if you're using Microsoft Word or uh, a Windows system, if you're using a Mac, I believe you can. But if you're using Windows, you can't have a dash. So just remember that. I'm just going to say AR aging summary. Save it. I'm going to replace it because I did it before and I kind of messed up. But now we're doing it again. So and I've, I've edited that part. So we're going to close this back out. And then we're going to export it to Excel. So I'm going to export it to Excel as well opening up the excel document so there it is i'm going to open up that excel document by the way i'm working in uh chrome that's why it's going to pop up down here if you're using a different browser it may pop up in some other location as is the norm of whatever browser you're using there it is let's go ahead and see if it fits on a page by going to the page layout view and it does seem like it fits on a page there back to the normal view looks good now we're going to be putting this or copying and pasting it into our other excel worksheet where we have our other reports and then we'll generate a PDF from it. We're gonna then uh, hit the plus button here, have a new report, gonna go back to our other report, gonna select the entire thing by selecting either the triangle up top or control A 
anywhere and then right click and copy or control C on the keyboard back to our new sheet. You got to be in A1 if you're someplace else then and you paste it just for example if you try to paste it there. It's going to say I can't do that because you got the whole sheet here right so you got to be in A1 cell A1 right click and paste the entire sheet. There it is. I'm going to go down below and say this is going to be AR aging summary and I'll keep it there and that looks good so now let's go ahead and print this entire thing I'm gonna save it I'm gonna to go to the reports or the file tab let's use the printer we're gonna be using that cute PDF printer once again key component however is to select not just the active sheet but the entire workbook containing at this point four separate pages with four separate reports within it then we're going to use the cute PDF printer to print it to that and that should sub or create a PDF file with those four reports in it. Let's see if that is indeed the case. It's going to ask us where do we want to put it at some point. We're going to select the drop down and we're going to say I would like that please to go into four other reports and we're going to be replacing this one because that's where we had three reports and now we have four reports. So I'm going to close this back out. It's going to overwrite that one. That's what we wanted to do. So I'm going to say that's good. Close this back out. Going to close this back out. Then we're going to say what did it do over here? How can we give these reports to somebody? We have now four reports which we could give one by one or we can put them all into one file and we can zip that file or compress it however you'd like to term that term. And then we can send one zipped file in an email, which is probably nicer. We can send it in a Excel format if we so choose. Or we can send one PDF file with the four reports in the one file. So there we have it. And that would look something like this. There's our second report, third report, and fourth report.